All right, I got on the podcast Carlos Cardenas with Organic Pest Control or Pest Solutions. It's, it's organic with a U R Organic Pest and Termite. Pest and Termite, and you're in Scottsdale, Arizona, right? That is correct. Yes, sir. And, and, and you are a startup. You you've yes. actually. When did you actually start up? I mean, officially. Actually, the company just launched about three weeks ago. Three three weeks, and have you sold anything yet? Yeah, I have. Not okay. a lot, but I have. <laughs> <laughs> but you have. Well, that that that's going to be easy for you. And um, to talk to us about, because this is not your first business. You've had other business before. And uh, I, I own a concrete uh, company back in Mississippi about 15 years ago. Owned it for about eight years. Yeah. And, 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 you, and you, that one was pretty successful. You, you, you had that. Yeah. So what, what did you do? I mean, what does a concrete company do? Well, uh, we, fought, we, we were on the coating side. I mean, we poured some, but we're right. mainly doing decorative coatings such as stamped concrete, stained. It right. actually happened after Hurricane Katrina. Uh, I couldn't go back to my job because, I mean, the roads were blocked. We have pine trees down everywhere. So I said, right. I got to do something. Uh, for some reason, I always liked con concrete coating. So I decided to go to school, learned it, launched the company, and it was wildly successful. Sold it before moving to Miami. Got it. Yeah, because you were, you, were, you were in my neck of the woods before. Origin oh, wow. What did you do originally before you started deciding to go do concrete? I work for companies like Coca-Cola and other multinationals in uh, marketing positions, mainly in sales. In sales. So you have a, you have a, a thorough background in, in sales and marketing because you have Correct. a marketing degree. Correct. Right. So, so, so you're coming into pest control and this side of it more because you sold for a national brand, pest control. I did. How long did you sell for, for them? Uh, for about three and a half years. Three and a half years. And then you decided you're going to start up now. So, so for you, you've been on the sales marketing side, and then you've been on the ownership side in a type of home service business. And then you went into sales again, and now you're back into owning uh, a business. So you come at it from a little bit, actually a very big different angle than the average pest control guy comes into this, where he comes in it from just the technical service side and has a lot of experience in that, but has no experience in actually marketing and building a business. But I, I think that, I think your unique perspective can help a lot of people in, in, in the sales part. Talk to me about your sales experience, because most people have not been in sales and pest control. Talk to me, and especially in a market like Phoenix, which is pretty unique market, um, compared to Miami, I, I think it's completely different. Uh, but talk to me about your experience there, what you sold, what you did, um, you know, talk to me about that from, 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 from your perspective there. Okay. So, uh, like I said, I, I, this was a, a multi, a very large multinational company. Uh, so they hired me on as an inspector. Uh, it was a beautiful journey. I mean, it, it Training was second to none, uh, learned, believe it or not, even uh, the technical side a little bit. Uh, but uh, it, it, the name, Franklin, I can't deny it. The name gave me an edge. Uh, Phoenix right. is an extremely competitive market. Last I heard, we had around 1,500 registered, licensed uh, pest control companies in Phoenix. Jeez. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, I mean, it's, I thought I thought I had competition at one county. I had two hundred and something companies. Now I got seven hundred, seventeen hundred technicians, but to have seventeen hundred companies, that's like cutthroat crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. So uh, and the uh, the price wars here are like we 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 see termite guys. I mean, all day long trying to sell termite jobs for for three hundred dollars, which I don't know how they can do it. But yeah, uh, the name gave me an edge, but of course, uh, sales what I've done my entire life. So uh, I was pretty successful doing it for this company. And that's where I fell in love with pest control. 
Uh, I left them not because I disliked them in any way, quite the contrary, but uh, I thought that that there was a better way. I thought I could, you know, uh, apply IPM techniques, which like you and I know, all these uh, large corporations, it's not that they they do believe in it 100%, but their approach to things a little different from from the approach I'm taking right now. So and I like it much better. You know, I don't, I don't, I, I use chemicals as a last resort. The great majority of companies, as far as I know, don't think the same. So, right. Yeah. That, that's that. And I just finished doing, which it'll air tomorrow, <clears throat> part, part two of IPM. And what the heck is it? And, and, you know, why is everybody so confused about it? Uh, and the great debate on it. Uh, so this is going to be an interesting one tomorrow. Uh, I, I know that one day, uh, Carlos, I'm going to find a dead horse's head in my bed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I, I am talking about things nobody wants to talk about. But it, this is one of the challenges that you have if you want to do things differently. You're not going to turn a large company around or come in and influence in any way being a marketer and being a sales guy. because you're entrepreneurial in your DNA. Correct. And it's just a matter of time before you decide I'm going to try to do something on my own again when you've done it before and you know you've been successful at it. Um, Anybody who hires me, I mean, I couldn't get a job when I came back to Miami to save my life. Um, I had to do run a a linen truck, a sales route on a linen truck Mm -hmm. because with my experience, nobody would give me a chance. Nobody wanted me in their company. I was going to be a disaster for them because I've owned businesses. I've been national sales manager, regional. How the heck do you go from there? And you come into Miami 20 years ago and it was like hundred. I did. A, I must have, I must have emailed and faxed when faxing was the thing. Um, I must have faxed literally about a thousand resumes out. Wow. Zero calls. Um, you know, like this guy's going to want a hundred thousand a year. There's no way we can pay. Nobody pays that in Miami. Right. You were overqualified. probably. Oh, I was overqualified. I literally had to start up and figure out what I was going to do and take, and basically not put all that on my resume and take it all off. So you get, get a job. So I can land a job because I was overqualified for everything. So I landed a 50 something thousand dollar a year job riding, running a truck, which nobody wow. thought I would make. And, you know, loading and unloading linen for a national linen company. Mm-hmm. And um, eventually that didn't last. I mean, th- that company's quality control was so bad that they had a 13% customer satisfaction. I'm not wow. talking about an 85% where they had a 13% dissatisfaction. No, they had a 13% customer satisfaction rating. Wow. <laughs> so That's I basically I, I basically walked in one day and I said, guys, I, I quit. I'm done. And then this is where pest control came in later for me because I, I had to start up. There, I'm just... I'm unhirable. Uh, 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 when you've done that, it becomes very difficult um, for you to get hired. And sometimes this is what happens also to technicians. They get so overqualified. They want to leave the company they're at, but a lower company is never going to pay them that fifty, seventy thousand dollars a year they're making for working six, seven days a week when they've got a, a $250,000, $300,000 route and they're going to go to a smaller company says, but I want to make the same amount, but I want to work 40 hours. Correct. You're going to get burned out or you're going to have to stay there or move into commercial or move into audited facilities or do something else because you're going to be stuck like Chuck. Um, And then does the smaller company starting up want a guy with that much experience where he's already he's been in the industry for 25 years. He's so set in his ways to come into a brand like yours that you're wanting to do organic and IPM. And we've been discussing this to death and say, yeah, I'm just going to spray their baseboards because I'm not going to change. Um, that's a, you got a huge challenge now in your hands because now you've got a, you're going to have to train people from the ground up. It's going to be very hard. I mean, we, we had a discussion yeah. where I spent the crow party about an hour, an hour and a half with you and your, and your technician. Yeah. And that was I mean, great. By the way, he, he, he fell in love with everything we talked about. He was like, Oh my God, I, things I'd never thought about. They've been trained so differently right. that it's already becoming a challenge. So you have a great point there for sure. Yeah. So, and how long has he been in the industry? For about nine years. Yeah. And hundred uh, percent. Yeah. And what and what I focused on is an expertise, not the experience. Yeah, I have ten thousand jobs under my belt <clears throat> over six, seven, nine years, but 
every day I go out, I still learn something. I'm doing now a, a weekly, a once or twice a week that I'm going out with my technician, pointing out stuff we're running into that you would think we shouldn't run into this after I've had, but my technician doesn't have that experience that I have. He's got a year and a half. My other guy's got a year and a half, a year. There's no way that in a year they're going to have any. So when he had, when he's followed my protocols, which I gave you and part of this whole, if you look at what my new website is and the old one, you'll see that there's a big similarity. I said, steal the whole thing because it, it, you're in a local market it, 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 for people who are wondering, Oh, somebody stole my idea from my website and copied it and um, totally took everything I wrote. Um, SEO locals where it's at, it's not going to affect you one bit. If somebody takes it, you don't have anything new uh, under the sun that you've created that hasn't already been spoken of just because somebody right. did it. So that's why I said, just steal the whole thing and, and do it locally because when you rebrand for local, that's where it's going to impact. It doesn't matter yeah, yeah. the whole context. So, yeah. So you're you're coming into this. You're you're several weeks old. Um, so far, what's been your challenge? What's been your biggest challenge in this? Well, I'm I'm starting doing the slow season. So okay. you know, uh, I was talking to my girlfriend about that uh, actually yesterday, and uh, I told her, you know sometimes I feel a little down because it, it's so slow. Right. And she, and she said, "Honey, uh, Elon Musk always says if you need encouragement." You're not a true entrepreneur and you are. So she said, you need, you need to relax, slow season. <clears throat> it's, you've been around for only a few weeks. I, patience is not one of my virtues, uh, Franklin, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, marketing, uh, it's, it, it started, you know, of course, it's, I got the ball rolling. Right. It's, uh, it's very expensive. Uh, even though I'm a marketing person, I'm, I'm new to pest control. So, right. So I, I've been trying to figure out ways to uh, to to allow my skills to apply, you know, to pest control, right. which it's slowly happening, and I'm getting there. So it's been interesting. It's been yeah, interesting. so so it, it's an interesting because you just said you're not very patient, and marketing, in its truest sense, is all about patience. Absolutely, brand building takes decades. Decades for sure. Brand building is not something you do because you got SEO or because you have ads or because you have this. And then you're a sales guy, which sales guys in our and in our business by nature is transactional. Totally. It's a transactional relationship. It's you called me because you need a bug, you got a bug problem. I tell you about my service, I quote you my price. You maybe have to think about it and talk to your wife. You're comparing two invoices, but at the end of the day, it's transactional. It's not long-term relationship strategic sales where I'm walking into a hotel chain and over the next year, I'm going to be visiting them once a month and emailing and getting information and, and doing strategic selling that can take a year to land that $1 million account. Correct. This is, this is by nature transactional. It's so you, you've got the impatience part and then you've got the branding and marketing part that you realize SEO isn't going to take off. Your website isn't going to take off in the next six months. For not for a while. Yes. You, you, yeah. It's going to, so you, now you got to go into ads or door knocking or, you know, um, BNI or some type of networking. You know, they always said the, the, your worth is in your network. Um, Absolutely. So now you got to, now you now you, you're like a schizophrenic because you've got five hats you're wearing. You've got the sales guy saying, I need to go make sales. The marketing guy is saying, I know it's going to take time. The network guy saying, I need to go out and invest time in these people. And now you're you're different than when you were working for a company where everything was done for you. Absolutely. Yeah, because you, you were getting leads. You weren't going out and getting all this business on your own. How many leads a day was your company pumping you? Uh I would say on average during during the summertime, probably I'd say between mm, two and four a day, and at, and at least a third or a half of those maybe pretty high quality leads. Okay, and how many uh, off of three to four a day that you were getting? How many were you closing? I was closing probably around between. 40 and 50%, I would say. All right, so one to two a day. Yeah. 
Okay, so one to two, one to two a day, and half of it being fed to you. And then, how much did you go out and get on your own? Actually, quite a bit because I've always, I've always done a lot of networking. Right. So, uh, but I would say, I mean, let, percentage wise, sales, I probably did twenty percent myself. They, they fed me. I like, mean, yeah, but eighty, eighty percent because of them. Because 80, of really so the eighty twenty rule. There you are. Um, and, and you go and sell these, but you were selling a lot of termite services. A lot, mostly. Yeah. And yeah. what was, what was your, what was your average sale on average? I say about 2,500 because of the market. I mean, I mean, 10, $10,000 termite sales were not rare for me. Right. It didn't happen uh, daily. They were not rare by any means, but yeah, be between two, three, four thousand dollars probably average. And on average on an annual sales, what were you averaging annually in sales? About well they they I went to a different branch after a while, but when I was in Scottsdale, probably around thirty to forty thousand a month. Okay, so that's about half a million, say a year, close to four hundred. About three fifty to four hundred probably. Okay, so 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 you can see how you easily and then you forget what it was like when you started that cement company. Yes. Yes. You forget that because now all of a sudden you've got this history and we quickly forget that history of what it was like. And because we got spoiled and we're thinking now, what am I going to do to eat? Yes. Because yes. it's different. Now you got to wait for that marketing to start working. You got to get out and sell, but then also you got to do the service and you got to do all the administrative and now you're wearing five, six hats. Absolutely. And you've got you to gotta mentally adapt to this. A hundred percent. Like I said, when I started my concrete company, I was extremely spoiled by the fact that everybody needed my services because a major hurricane had just hit us. So yeah, all I had to do, I, I literally bought a $2,000 pickup, put a, put a magnetic sign on the door. I was, I was, start, you know, I was making money. Yeah, because there, there, there was there was a there was a huge need. Huge, it's supply, yeah. supply and demand. It's, it's simple. All about supply and demand. Yes. So and and you have a huge supply in in Scottsdale, and now you got to create the demand. And now you're in a niche market which is big in Scottsdale because that's what we were discussing. Yes. That this mentality of going eco and friendly and Absolutely. green is, is huge. Yet so few companies are actually in that space. So exactly. you've got a, you've got a blue ocean that you're navigating in, but you're navigating it by yourself. <laughs> you know, nobody nobody's in that ocean with you, but you're by yourself. So it's the this is where I was in. So you, you know where I, where I said it took me forever to to get that because I'm in a market where nobody cared about eco friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. Could, Miami, nobody cared. Awful. For sure. Yes. You got 65% Hispanic. You know, I tell people that, you know, you can get insulted all you want, but I'm a Hispanic and I live here and I've lived here all my life. And Miami is a third world banana Republic. <laughs> it is. I lived there for many years. So I, I, I second that for sure. Okay. The reason I made so much money is because I used to work exclusively in one city called Doral, which, you know, where all the Vene rich Venezuelans came over because you're from Venezuela. Yes, I am. They, they came over to Miami and they bought millions of dollars with them. And they were buying million dollar houses cash yeah. so that they could get their papers, but they had the money to get all their papers and start companies and say within a year they had papers because they came with money, they built businesses and they're not a threat to our right. they, they got investment visas, correct. They got investment visas. So so that's why I made so much money where I did, I had in one, one gated community, I had a hundred clients and I did the entire city for the city government, the parks, recreation, and all that. I was well known in that city and mm -hmm. I got spoiled and then things started to change and the economy changed and all that. And then I had to, that's when I decided to start my eco-friendly business, but I, I initiated it there. So I understand this market. People don't understand that come that Miami is definitely not the rest of America. And people that live in Miami think Miami is America. There's a big disconnect. Huge disconnect. Uh -huh. And so, so that's why, with the whole issue with SEO, I've tried to hand this off three times already. Failed miserably at handing off the SEO because people do not understand the culture 
They do not understand the demographics. They do not understand the psychographic, the sociographics. It's totally different than being in any part of America. And I had to, and, and the difference be you, between you starting in SEO is you're starting from zero. Correct. And, and you build from there. The question is how fast can they build? What is it really going to cost to, to get that traffic, get that traffic built? For me, it was two years because I'm in the sixth largest market in the country. This yeah. is not, this is not an easy market to be in. Um, and then second of all, I had to compete with hundreds of guys on the web and rank up through those. Basically I had to eat my way up through there. Um, and it was four or five hours a night for two years. But my second strategy, my backup strategy was doing YouTube videos. And YouTube is, I said, I'm not going to get this right away, but with YouTube videos, I could probably rank, which YouTube is extremely difficult to rank in to the tune of a hundred. And we just hit yesterday, 5,000 subscribers. There aren't pest control out there. Companies that have 5,000 subscribers. You, your, your YouTube channel, you mean? My YouTube channel for my nature pest, for my business. Right. No, not, not, not the uh, pest. No, no, the pest geek just hit over a thousand this month. Okay. Subscribers. It's extremely hard to rank on YouTube. It's called mass amount of content at scale. And, and I know what my success has been and I know how to do it. And I know where all my errors are. The, 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 the with my SEO. And I know what we need to do. The problem is the time that it takes. I put in about two to four hours a day on social media, SEO and videos. Now, what did I do? I said, after this fiasco that I decided nobody understands what we do. Nobody understands the fact that I have at, at the peak season in the summer, I have 17,000 clicks to my website. Wow. Nobody understands very few SEO companies. This is where the, the pitfall is mm -hmm. that SEO companies, very few do site migrations very successfully from sites that are actually ranking mm -hmm. to make them better. Usually they will repair the one I have. They didn't want to repair. They wanted to completely. And when I consulted three other SEO guys mm -hmm. that I trust, the reason I couldn't use them is because there was a conflict of interest because friends of mine who own those companies do mm -hmm. business with them in the same city. And I said, okay. it's a conflict of interest. I can't use them. But he says, look, you really have to do, if you're going to build a brand new site, you're going to have to migrate all those pages. The company didn't want to migrate. I said, let's run ads from day one. I don't want, yeah. I don't want to run ads because it's going to be a brand thing. And now they're going to see this website and then this. And I said, but I'd rather them see that than get no calls. Switch it to phone calls instead of links to the website. Correct. We didn't run the ads until after my site tanked three months later when I said, let's start ads now. I'm willing to pay for them yeah, yeah. and understand that that's a huge cost. So now, not only did I lose about eight, nine thousand dollars on that whole transaction, yeah. but the irreparable damage that I lost all that business for a month, which was more than what I would have paid for the website. Now, thank God we're finally back up and ranking again. I switched it and we got it back up and ranking and we're starting to get calls again this morning. Uh, as of yesterday, we started getting calls, but I decided that I'm going to, which I've been discussing this, this. See, when I bring stuff up, people think, oh, he just thought of this. I, this is conversations I've been having for two to three years with Eric, who's my guy right now. We're doing some partnerships. And I said, look, dude, I want to, we need to build an in-house ad agency we need to be our own ad agency we we have to realize that when you're in business and you want to scale that you're really a sales and marketing company that happens to sell pest control right the mentality has to shift and this is where the you understand it uh, i understand 100%. it but the average pest control guy says, no, I don't want to be a sales guy. I don't want to be a marketer. That's sleazy. That's it. Because of all the reasons that I got burned, I've gotten burned three times. They gotten burned and I don't want, and then they see the door knockers and they see all the big company sales guys and, and sales and marketing has a bad rap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you don't make the transition mentally and emotionally that you are a media company, 
that you we are. Me. I'm a media company. I produce hundreds of videos. I'm, we're going to now 10x this because I can bring him on board. And we can produce 10 times the amount of content to because I have to influence and I'm going to do another video tomorrow of why. But here's what the studies show, Carlos. Mm -hmm. The average consumer doesn't think pesticides are bad. Two thirds. Only about 13% of the consumer thinks pesticides are bad. 13%? About 13% think pesticides are bad. Wow. Here's, wow. Where, here's where, the, here's where the, the problem is. Over here, the same people think 77% of pest control companies' products are toxic. Wow. Why? They believe that what we have in our arsenal to control pests is more lethal than what they're buying over the counter. Wow. That's the problem. Little do they know. Yeah. Yeah. That is 6% of bifenthrin is still 6% of bifenthrin. We, they are applying it at the same. The problem is they're filling their house with boric acid all over the place, throwing dust all over the place because they don't think that the products are toxic. They think so. They ask, you know, I just, they, they, the reason they don't call a professional pest control company is not because they want to do it themselves is because they think of all the pesticide that we're using is so toxic. They're trying to avoid it. Right. Because and, yeah, yeah. They, they think that the products we purchase are, are, are stronger than what they have access to. Yeah. And that's the word everybody uses. I need something. I try doing it myself. Every time I hear, I need you to come and use something stronger. And I said, actually the way we do it, you've contaminated your house a hundred percent, a thousand percent more. I don't think you can do a thousand percent more. Uh, that would be mathematic, but more, I will contaminate your house 95% less 95. in the next 10 years than you have in the last year spraying all that all over your house. Because what we're doing is IPM. And what we're doing is we're using predominantly bait. You've, you've got my protocols. I gave them to you. Yeah, yeah, It's predominantly bait. So the protection of the indoor quality, and this is where the disconnect is. And what has the universities accomplished in changing this mindset? Nothing. What has the National Pest Management Association, including they have a new division for marketing purposes to change this mentality? And what has the large brands done other than remove the spraying? And if you've seen it, there's no longer in the ads anybody spraying anything. Correct. Yes. I've noticed the, that. Yeah. The marketing is changing where they, it used to be, you know, we do this on a science level to now to where you see a kid and their family being tucked away at night and there is no mention of a pesticide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they, they, if they would, I would be so thankful if one of these companies would, national brands would actually say they're green because the, the, the marketing arbitrage from that, that we would gain to validate what we're saying would be massive. And then it's going to be an issue of who provides the best customer service, not who provides the same, because this is green and green could be the same, but the differentiator in every company is going to be the service you give to your client, how you take care of them. Absolutely agree. Brand is everything. And, and your brand is what people think about the feeling they get when they think about your company. And if the feeling they get is nausea, you got a problem. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And, that's know, where, and that's where marketing comes in. A lot of people, it's like, I was talking to a, to a VP for McDonald's years ago, and that we're having this type of conversation. He said, uh, he said to me, a lot of people think we're in the food uh, business. We're not. We're in the convenience business. Yeah. Okay. So, what do people want when they go to McDonald's? They're not expecting a gourmet burger and they want to sit down with a girlfriend and have a glass of wine. No, right. they want in and out in two minutes and they want, they want to pay $5. So right. they're in the convenience business. Nowadays, marketing, the way it has evolved, we, I mean, we have to understand that we are in the marketing business, not so much the pest control business. And, and a convenience business because nobody wants to be inconvenienced. Correct. Exactly. And th think about it. I was just having this discussion like about IPM. And I said to do IPM, IPM is really intensive on inspection. How many of your customers want to wait for you at home 
on a on a midday week on a Wednesday at 315 to make sure that you're there on time, first of all, mm -hmm. and that you have to inspect that entire property before you can provide a service. And the study shows that 60% of people rather just have an exterior service alone and not put the pesticide in their house. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to be inconvenienced by having to be there. They only want to be inconvenienced when there is a problem to call you and then you make the appointment to go in that house. Yeah. That's the, the whole marketing of pest control and what we've done is based on that knowledge of how that customer behavior absolutely and selling the convenience. Could we do an inspection and in, in, in every single time when you work for a large national brand and you've got 15, 20 stops a day, good luck. And good luck that customer waiting around for you when he's at lunchtime and he says, I'm, I'm going to be home at lunch. Can you make it? And you're no. 45 minutes away to make a special trip for that client. It isn't a reality. It, is, it isn't a reality. Second of all, we've already proven that people want convenience. That's all they want. And, and, and they will give up all their personal info for convenience. They will, people say, no, my customers don't, man. if you're in rural nowhere, I get it. But if you're in a major city and major cities are becoming more, especially with millennials, millennials don't want to live out in the middle of nowhere. Right. They right. want to live in that convenience of my, my store that I shop at is walking distance two blocks away. It's in I all can, aspects of life. It's, it's, we live in a fast, fast life. We live in yeah. a fast lane. That's all people are seeking. So that's where, why you have to focus on, on, on yeah. that. Type of thing. I, I, got, I got Amazon Prime. Most of the stuff I order Amazon Prime, I get it the next day. When I don't now get it, the Phoenix, we, we're getting it the same day. Because <laughs> they're opening up RDCs, right? And re redistribution centers close by. I mean, I remember when I when I started my food service business, I said, "I'm I'm Columbus is one of those places that is the hub of every at at, at one point twenty years ago, thirty years ago was the hub of every major retailer." had a distribution center in Ohio. The reason is you can put a truck on a road and have it anywhere, 80% of the population within eight hours because all the population is east of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So so if you put Columbus as like the geographic center of America um, for population and you could put a truck and be in New York in less than eight hours, be in Atlanta in eight hours, be in, 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 in Chicago in eight hours, just about anywhere in the country other than Miami because you can't, be in Miami eight hours from anywhere. It takes eight hours just to get out of Florida. Uh, but anywhere you could, and and that was now they're opening up these distribution centers and working direct with retailers so that it gets picked up from the store and gets sent to you and delivered within hours, just like an Uber. I mean, think about the, the, the restaurant industry, how that changed with Postmates and Uber delivers and Uber Eats. Oh, and, gosh, yeah, yeah. Because the delivery, the convenience of paying six bucks to get your meal. It's all about convenience. It's all about convenience. And, and, and we keep thinking it's all about chemical and it's, it's all not. about so this knowledge and, and it isn't you, the knowledge is important. You got to have it, but at, to what level is it really, you know, do I need to have a AIB SQL level knowledge to control bugs in a home? The reality is you don't. And, and I've trained my people about, 80% of what they need, the rest we deal with it to get this thing going because speed matters in, in, in building a business. The question is how much fast, how fast do I want to grow? That's my thing right now. I'm still comfortable that about that 25% a year growth. And in your case, you're going to have lightning hundred percent, thousand percent growth because you're brand new. Brand new. Right. Right. So, so you're going to have that, but dude, it, it, it's incredible um, that this is this is what we're selling. We're selling convenient solutions. People are not calling us because they believe our, our products are more toxic. Chemicals are very cheap. And anybody thinks they can do it because they saw the bug man. So in order for me to change the mentality of my client and the people I'm trying to target and reach them, mm -hmm. I got to produce massive amount of content. Yeah, yeah. And that, in my opinion, that's going to be my biggest obstacle yeah. because I've even uh, asked uh, uh, people about it. I mean, 
I would say at least 70, 80, 90% of pest control companies, on, you, you see them on their truck, kid and pet friendly treatments, kid and pet friendly treatments. So <laughs> that confuses the heck out of consumers. And uh, so I've had several tell me so, such and such companies want to, is, is going to charge me $20, $29 every other month, believe it or not. Some people are charging that in Phoenix. And they are green. They're totally green. They explain to me why, because they're, they're using uh, pyrethroids. They're using chrysanthemum-derived uh, uh, products. So they are derived from a plant. And I'm like, well, man, that's not exactly the case. Uh, yeah. But then again, you can get too, too uh, technical with them, but educating the customer is going to be my biggest challenge by far. Yeah. And I'm, 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 uh, I don't know if you, since you're in marketing, do you remember Cy Sims? Uh, Cause you're about my, but you probably weren't here in America mm -hmm. when, when, when he was around. Mm -hmm. Cy Sims was the owner of Sims clothing. Oh, okay. In New York. And they came, they were down in, in a couple of seats. They were here in Miami uh, when I was a kid. And I've been a marketing guy, and, and I, I guess it's just in my DNA to mm -hmm. observe stuff like this as a kid. And I remember how they would educate the customer on retail. This is television in the 70s. And they would educate the customer on retail. They would say, if an item is on our shelf for so many days, it has to be marked down after so many days. And then after so many days, it gets marked down to this. And then finally, it gets cleared out because we got to make room for the new styles and new things coming in constantly. And they did entire commercials. This was his whole thing. And he says, and he, he had his line. He says, an educated consumer is our best customer. Later, like the company folded and he didn't make it after being up. He was, I mean, multi-billionaire. I mean, I think he made it to a billionaire status. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the educated consumer. That's huge. Yeah. Is, is our best customer. If we would learn to apply that, that today is still taught in business school. I mean, I, I studied that when I was in business school. Mm -hmm. um, and what I have to do is I got to educate the consumer, not the customer. The customer is after he bought. I can't educate him after he bought. I got to pre-educate him before he buys and sell against what he thinks. I just had, a, I get off the phone and I have long conversations with people because I am listening. People think I'm talking so much all the time. I'm listening to what everybody is saying. I listen to the words that come out of their mouth because words mean things. And I had a conversation about what's the difference between me and my competitor who was selling her an eco-friendly service too. And I said, well, if he's telling you he's going to solve that ant problem with mint oil, he's lying because he can't. You can't, correct. A ask him to give you the list of the products he's really going to use. And one of my pref preferred products is permethrin. Well, permethrin isn't going to last that long, especially for ant control. And they mix it with pyrethrin. You know, I'm having this conversation with her and I said, here's my list. I got a web a page and my products are on there and I give you a list, but here is how we apply it. And this is why I have to do videos showing exactly how we do it, which the industry is against saying you're giving away all our secrets. Mm -hmm. And if you don't give away the secrets, you have an uneducated, ignorant customer because nobody can understand, well, we're just going to use pyrethroids and we're going to crack and crevice. What the heck is a crack and crevice to a customer? <laughs> exactly. that's, a, that's an industry term. <laughs> are you, you know, are you putting that on my butt crack or which crack are you using? <laughs> I know a lot of, so many pest control companies get so technical that uh, like they, they keep talking exclusion. They put it on their truck, exclusion. Nobody knows what that means. Nobody knows what exclusion. We, you know, it, 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 you got to, and the thing is they don't want to put it into, no, because then I'm dumbing it down and then I'm not being technical and they're more afraid of what the competitor is going to think than what the customer thinks. And they're here trying to impress all their competition and their colleagues when at the end of the day, I can't pay my bills with any of that. Yeah, they, they should never do that. What did the CEO of Samsung keep saying over and over again to, to, the, to his salespeople? Never, ever talk about the, the, the technical aspect of a product. Talk Only talk about the benefits. Forget yeah. about the technical aspect. Yeah. And that's what I try to focus on. So, and uh, it's been a challenge. So when people ask me, so how, how are you going to go about, about the process of being so green? I always tell them, it's, it's not a product. It's like you and I have discussed, Franklin. It's a process. So therefore, it does yeah. take me longer to treat your property 
because I'm not just going to douse your house with chemicals or what they what a lot of people call the so and so you know green products. You know, it's a process. It yeah. will take take me possibly 20, 30 minutes. My goal is to service seven, eight, nine homes a day, not seventeen like a lot of people. Yeah. So I have to show the value of yeah. my uh, of my process. You know, so and, and and you're talking to them and they're looking at you like because under how do you explain process so the only way i can do it is through commercials what are my commercials my demos are commercials all my videos are commercials right because i have to be able to show that when they go there and they see this you're talking to me about things that i've never heard of that are foreign pest control as far as i understand is the guy who came to my mother's house sprayed every month the guy who came to my house sprayed every month, but here's what happened. I all of a sudden I got a puppy because I'm a millennial and I got a child and I decided I don't want that around them. Mm -hmm. It was okay for his mom. It was okay for his dad. It was okay for his grandma. It's not okay for his kids. Correct. Yeah. Now they see the value. And now what we have to do is turn that technical info <laughs> into, into, concepts and, and and wording that people can understand that is consumable it's like telling your kids eat your vegetables i hate vegetables mm -hmm. oh. so i have to blend them into something so they can eat their vegetables right am i being deceitful to my kids by hiding the vegetables <laughs> it's in their best interest but i'm not being deceitful because it's well documented what i do i can take them to the science and say read right. Right. read these 15 articles from every major university on, on German Roach IPM, and you'll see that what I'm telling you is true, that I'm not saying I'm doing something I'm not. But we do have natural products. They're, they have their place. And baits have their place. And, I would, and, and inside, we've created a zero spray service, exclusive, with nothing but baits, with the exception of 5% of our jobs we need to do with some type of service or crack and crevice. But 95% of the time, 99% of the time, we never have to spray a darn thing. Inside. Outside, we've been discussing this in your temperature, in your sun, with your landscapes. Well, was I used to seeing guys just, just dousing homes with the abuse of a bunch of chemicals, mostly pyrethroids, saying, yeah, so it's it's pretty, pretty much the, uh, the spray and pray uh, philosophy that's going to take care about, like you and I talk about, about eighty percent of the of the issues. Right. That's what they're going to get between ten and probably call callbacks. So I knew that that's not what I wanted. So not having come from the technical side, I had to figure out a way, and uh, that's what took so long. And right. now I feel that I wouldn't call it perfected it because no, I'm not. It's not by any means even close. Right. But coming up with something viable, with something that makes sense to the customer, and to me, it's 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 been the biggest challenge by far. Yeah, that's it. And especially when you wanted to go that, because you, you realized seventeen hundred clients. I mean, seventeen hundred companies. You're 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 in a bloody bath to go down in the marketplace. Maybe everybody's on the race to the bottom with pricing. Um, how are you going to create that that blue ocean strategy? By the way, I, the reason I use the term blue ocean, for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, is a book called The Blue Ocean Strategy. That's what I read. That's what validated what I wanted to do and what I was doing um, in my business to validate how you can actually go into a space that is uncontested mm -hmm. and, and actually create. But remember that you're in an uncontested space, you have a bigger demand, I think. I probably would venture to say that you probably have about, I would say 80% more demand for your service, the way you're wanting to do it, than what I have in Miami. Um, it's This is not an eco-friendly town. This is yeah. quite the opposite. To it, this is why I, I said, you know, in part of what I want to do is I can probably get you 80% of the knowledge over the phone and in writing and all that. But unless I take people by the hand and I walk a technician through the process, mm -hmm. 
you, you don't get that other 20, which is pivotal, which is, that's the one that relieves the frustration. That's why you see me doing so many videos. I can't I understand that all the training in the industry is lectures. Nobody ever takes you in the field by the hand or shows you an actual video on how it's actually performed, even at the best CEU training in the world. Yeah, they don't. They yeah. Never. It's still a lecture. Mm -hmm. And and this is what I'm trying to change. The problem is everybody says, well, you, we can't do videos and we can't do this and we can't do that because of, of a lot of reasons. A lot of it is the culprit, the culture that they're in that doesn't allow for it, doesn't let them. Um, that's one of the things that you're going to have to be real patient. But what I used to do, and this is just what I, I learned to do, is I would take 10 properties with all different levels of, of problem. And usually my most difficult ones. And then I would take those 10 homes and those are the ones I would test in. So I would limit my risk. It's risk management. If you're going to do R and research and development, you only want to risk so much of the company's budget on research and development. If you can get it down to 1%, where there's, you know, there's, there's only a 1% risk and, you know, you can kill at any time. Minimize it, correct. Yeah. Minim minimize your risk. I think that's where I, where I thrive, where I, that's what I would do. So right now we're, we've been testing 100% 25B lawn care on one property for over a year now. This is, but I only had one that was willing to take the chance. Wow. She actually told me, this is what I want. I don't want a single synthetic product on my property. Mm -hmm. And her husband didn't care, but she's got a degree. She's got a master's degree mm -hmm. in aromatherapy. Oh, wow. She's <laughs> a, she's a yoga instructor that happens to own an organic juice bar. Wow. This is my ideal client. That's the ideal client. Yeah. Ho <laughs> however, <clears throat> the expectations because of how she's learned and she knows everything about essential oils, how she's used them in therapy and how she sells them to her clients and all this has never been tested on a roach. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we were trying to control, like when we get carpenter ants and ghost ant problems, how are we so this cow has a crawl space. It's got a septic tank. You talk about the most, she's got a lawn. And, and what I talked to her about was if you can get me the cultural practice, perfect on the lawn, meaning you can get me that mowing. Perfect at the right height, at the perfect height, with a perfectly sharp blade, and they can do this weekly, we can give it a shot and see what happens. So all the shrubs, 100% natural, all the lawn, 100% natural, and then the property now is on 100% natural. And do we still have problems? Yeah, we still want to, the, the, the deal was that if I have to use a synthetic, I'll let you know, but my goal is to use as so far this, winter we've only had to use a fungicide once that's amazing my other properties we've had to use it three and four times wow why because i know intuitively from all the research of what 25b do they're antiseptic in nature and so but we couldn't test it completely because nobody wanted to take that chance on their lawn we've been using biostimulant products and we've been using uh, using minerals and using micros We've been able to test it on this one property for over a year. She's extremely happy. That's and awesome. mind you, mind you, this is this is a fifteen hundred square foot home that costs a million bucks. Wow! On, my, on Miami Beach. On Miami Beach, of course, yeah. One million dollars for fifteen hundred square foot, and what she has in lawn is like a thousand <laughs> square feet of lawn in the back, the garden. Wow. It is a big house, but we've been able to do it. She's extremely happy with the color, and, and there's no insects, no diseases, no grubs. We haven't had any of these issues. So now I told my tech, I said, all right, we tested that one for a year. This is the only thing we haven't tested with natural is lawn. And I said, take every monthly property we have and let's convert it and see what happens. But I got to take that risk. Yeah. Because I know, I know that he's on there constantly and he's inspecting because that's our, been our trick to IPM in the landscape. Natural is we can't do quarterlies. We have to do monthly. So we're there on a monthly basis, the chances of something getting out of hand. And what I do is I train my client to say, if you see a spot on the lawn, you call us. Yeah. It isn't a complaint. It isn't a callback. It doesn't reflect negative. I'm not, I, I educate them on why they need to call me at the first sign because there are things we can't control that we can't, it's outside. We can't control your outside. Mm -hmm. So to us, when we get that callback is 
it's an opportunity for us to to do what is right for the client never but our callbacks are so low but we educate the client so he calls us hey that large spot and he knows what it's called now he knows how to id it because he sits from his second story window and looks down at his lawn is starting to show up and we're there within a day or two solving it so so it's that's the secret for us has been that testing proving limiting the exposure so we don't have 100 clients mad at us because it didn't work and we test one new thing every year so we don't go crazy testing but we stick to it in other words okay it didn't work like this let's try it every two weeks and see if two weeks is better but until we go through all four seasons yeah you don't know it's gonna work we have no clue so the patience game just like in marketing just like in branding it's it's a patience game for us to be able to, if we can get the client to play along with us and understand that if something goes awry, my technician can correct it immediately. So right. if we start getting that plot, it says, yeah, we've, we're getting called every week, man. This isn't working. Um, so now that's how, that that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to really be real patient with yourself, most of all. Right. And, and, that's, and that's why setting expectations, uh, the right expectations is so important. Talking about threshold. And, I all, and I've been talking to uh, to my few customers I have about that. So they're, they're, they seem to be on board. I mean, they like the, the approach. I always tell them, you know, I'm, I, I also have a policy, by the way, of, of zero in, in, uh, interior spray. Zero. Uh, so they love that, but they understand with, with the, my approach is so different. Like what I'm going to do outdoors. <clears throat> is probably going to be effective, but they're on board. They, they, I tell them, you, you, you give me a call. Right. I'm always going to be here for you. Give me a call. If you happen to see this, you happen to see that. So I, I've been educating the customer a lot. Yeah. And so far, they seem very receptive. Right. So, you know, you know, I'm positive about it, actually. Yeah, and, and understand that with our client mentality also, here's where people don't understand that. They try, they try to offer a green service, but their people don't have the culture of green. We're green from the ground up. We built it from the ground up green. You're building it from the ground up green. When people want to be a Me Too service, it's like going to McDonald's and asking for a pizza. You could get a pizza. Is it going to be a good pizza? Probably not. So, so the whole idea of adding an add-on service where we're, we have an option is not the same as a company that's devoted and the culture of that company is devoted. Yeah, that's huge right there. That's huge, yes. And, and that's branding. That's branding, correct. And, that, and that's what that is. You got the whole, branding isn't your logo. Branding isn't design. Branding is the whole package. Your identity. Your identity and what the customer. So my customer and your customer are probably going to be a lot more forgiving because they don't want to kill everything on the planet either. They just don't want it inside their home. If they got spiders on the bushes, it's not a big deal. They just don't want spiders crawling on them. Exactly. So, so there's a whole mindset where you don't have that client that says, I'm expecting you to kill everything because we understand it's an ecological, it's a... It's an eco-friendly service. We were taking the entire college. It's a holistic service. And if they see one ant, chances are they're not going to flip out and say right. you're a total failure versus when you sold it as, yeah, we're going to eradicate everything. And you're not going to have any problems. And you as a salesman, because you needed the sale, you sold it because everybody's your customer. Because what do we sell? Pest control. Everybody needs pest control. We sell pest control. No, we have a unique selling proposition for our client. Very unique, yes. And, and that is the true, so we have a, a, a we have a blue ocean, we have a unique selling proposition, we have totally something different than, than everybody else is selling and trying to get a salesman to come over from that mentality, trying to get another employee to come over for that mentality and, and, and fit in our culture where they don't feel like they have to get the 10 sales a day or the, t- or the 15 jobs, but if we do eight, it's okay. And, and that whole slowing down. And like I said, it's a whole man, it's it, this whole process for you. Um, I'd be interesting to have this conversation with you in the next three months. I would love to. And seeing where the progress, where the, the pitfalls are, um, because it's going to be interesting. It's you're going to, the learn. I, I am just, 
I am big on education, but I'm also big on learning. And, and learning doesn't come from education. Learning comes from the experience. Yeah. And, and I think that that's where people miss it, where they don't want to go through the bad experiences. They want to protect themselves from all these experiences. And I think that's what, I think that's what makes me, if I can be a mentor to somebody, it's not the fact that I have it all together, that I'm perfect. It's the fact that I've made so many more mistakes than you. Exactly. And, I, and willingly, I've made the mistakes to learn. And, and you have been, and I, I highly, highly, highly appreciate it. Uh, I tell people, you know, he's my mentor. And I tell you, know, you, you are incredibly knowledgeable. Uh, you are devoted to this type of uh, environmentally friendly treatments like I am. And right. so I love learning from you. You know, I, I, I even listen to your podcast when I'm in the car. Which is, and, uh, which, which if, if you have your girl there, she's going to like, this, I, this is getting sickening. <laughs> you know, she tells me, can, can we listen to music instead of this in the car? Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? I, I know, I, I, I get her. Uh, no, no issues. But oh, yeah, brother, it's, it's, it's really cool. Um, what, what is so? Uh, how, how do? Let me see your shirt. How do you actually pronounce oh, that name? I have this right here. But what's interesting is the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I can almost read it. And I got to get something like that from my guys, too. I can almost read it. So what he says, basically, what he says is the same service that the same service performed, performed in hospitals and organic facilities is now available to you. So it's a short version. And I thank you that you stole that. Yeah. I, I, you know why I don't care, honestly, is... I want to see this become a, a national phenomenon where people are actually understanding it. They're buying it that, that the, 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 even each individual company gets to grow doing this. Um, I could care less that you stole it. I told you to steal it. Um, I, I really want people to be able to, to have a really unique position in the marketplace. I like honestly was I, I wanted to come up with with a marketing message, not a slogan. Right. That, that, and the more I read yours, because I was like, is there any anything better that I can think of? Not really. That's why I talked to you about doing this. Yeah. And people are loving it. I mean, I have it on my truck. Right. I have it everywhere. That's going to be my marketing message. Uh, so because you know, all we do really, I mean, I do organic. People can't tell me. Well, what you're doing is not what's done in organic facilities because I actually have organic facilities that we service that are certified organic. And we have an actual protocol that was sent to us by their auditor, their auditing facility agency. Mm -hmm. And this is what they required. And this is what I've been doing for homes. So when we're talking about a doing a, there's a difference between doing an organic service. We brand ourselves as organic because we have to be able to communicate effectively to that client what it is that client wants. Was it, uh, do, you, do you ever, have you ever been in a Marshall Fields store? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. W w remember the, the, the Marshall Fields had this premise where he had a salesman that was trying to negotiate with the lady on the floor. Mm -hmm. So goes the story. And, 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 and Marshall Fields told the salesman, don't negotiate, give the lady what she wants. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to give people what they want, but we're responsible for doing it right. Exactly. In other words, I am explaining to you that this is an organic facilities compliant. You're never going to have 100% organic because we don't even have organic products. I mean, what am I going to use? Nematodes in your house? I can't do it. What is the closest thing? It's IPM. What I've seen guys do jobs at hospitals. I know what is done. The problem is nobody knows. So, so if I call it, we're going to give you an IPM service. What the heck is that? It's an organic compliant. We are nature. Protocol. And, and actually, the name of my company doesn't have to do with indoor. My, my, my goal was so lofty that I, I totally, and I ended up with nature. But how did you get that name? How did you even get it? Because it's almost impossible to get. I said, it just came to me one day. I was thinking of nature pest. And I says, what is, what is it? 
Well, I took that slogan off of our, our site now. It used to say we kill pests and save nature because we were so, we were 95% lawn and ornamental. We weren't doing general household pest. We were lawn and how much chemical do you use in lawn and ornamental? Like a thousand percent more chemical than in GHP. And, and I was bothered by that so much of spraying all of that chemical, all of that, making a tank mix with a fungicide, two insecticides, a, a synthetic fertilizer, and then going back over it and doing it every single time, which is what every company does, and sprays all those chemicals on everybody's lawn, instead of going to an IPM model where we only apply that chemical and the herbicide and the fungicide when there's a problem. And most yeah. people are never willing to take that risk. Yeah. And I started educating the customer and switching them and switching them and switching them. And it took me about seven years <clears throat> to where we, we started amending the soil with biological products and correcting the soil for that client. So my new client that comes on now might get a complete blanket service with herbicide and fungicide because they've got all these problems. But then we start adding all these bio products. And we start weaning them off of the herbicide and the fungus because they're getting their landscape done right. They're getting their mowing right. They're getting the irrigation right. And now to where, where I used to apply maybe six applications a year, we're down to two. Wow. And in most cases, none. That's progress. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about is this progress. But this takes time to overcome. And, and how do we do the marketing? So that's why I would rather have 100 guys across the country steal that. And, and, and all of us educating people on what really it is and mm -hmm. sticking together on this mm -hmm. than to say, well, I'm doing my own thing and you're doing your own thing, calling it, you know, IPM and you call it this and I call it that. And why don't we just have an agreement of what we do? Because yeah. we can't get it from the university. We can't get it from the government. Yeah. We, we get no support from the associations on this. I mean, who's there to really. And then what we get called is a bunch of lunatics that spray mint oil. That's what I'm trying to overcome in the customer's mind that that's not what we do. And then the industry's calling us a bunch of, you know, whatever it is, you know, hocus pocus guys. Um, but we're, we got to take the branding out there and that's what I'm hoping can be done, bro. I think, I, I think you, you're going to, you're going to be successful. Number one is you understand marketing, you understand management, you understand business. Just like I can teach my guy all the technical stuff. I can't teach him to be nice. I can't teach him to be courteous. I can't teach them to pay attention to detail. Exactly. Those yeah. are the things that have to be hardwired into him. Right and, right. and then if I find that guy that all these things are hardwired, I said, bro, would you like to do something different? Because sometimes he's working for nine bucks an hour. I just had the most amazing experience because here is the dichotomy of things. I, uh, I, 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 I don't even like ordering from Best Buy anymore because they don't have anything on their shelves. They're, they're, they never have anything on the shelves when I go in the store. I order it online. It's not there. So I've ordered everything from Amazon. There was this one computer that I wanted, which I just bought a super rocket for, for my guy, the same one I have here, <clears throat> which we're doing this recording on. And half of the stuff, they didn't want to ship it to me. They wanted me to go pick it up in the store nearby. Wow. It wasn't even an option. So I had, to, okay, so I said two products were ready. I went to go pick it up. Mm -hmm. The kid that was taking out a box for another client saw me and he says, did you, you know, did you order it already to get it at your, at curbside? And I said, no. And he says, okay, I'm with this client. Do me a favor. Just go over to customer service and give them the order so they can pull it. When he was done with that client, he went and found me in line. And he said, here, so you don't have to stand here. Let me find out if I can scan it and order it for you and get it for you. Mm -hmm. He could have waited till the next order was on. He says, man, I'm, I did my job. I delivered it. No, he went and found me. He took, scanned it. He says, wait right here. I'm going to go get it for you right now. And he took the initiative of getting it for me, loaded it in my car. I mean, that's the kind of guy that I would hire in a heartbeat for my company. Oh, absolutely. And then train him to do the technical stuff. Because if he's got that heart to care that much about me picking up a screen, Imagine what he can do in a real company that can oh, show him how to make money. Absolutely. And I believe 100% in that. And that's why I started the, this. And at this point, I am in my company, the technical director. I am the general manager. I am the owner. I'm the guy that sets up all the protocols. Um, 
And when I hire my, I'm looking at hiring probably if I can get this marketing thing going the way I want to in the next 90 days, hire an admin salesperson to do inside sales and admin work. Um, you know, do a lot of the calling on the customers, the existing, get some up sales, um, take care of all incoming calls that we get for leads and sell it. But I, if I get a person with sales experience and the right heart, the right culture, they can make, I don't need a guy that says, I need to make a hundred thousand. And your guy says, I'm, I'm happy if I make 36,000 to start and then 50 to 60,000 in commissions, you know, to all together a package mm-hmm. and, and, and is patient. And, and, and what I'm looking at, how many women have been displaced in this workforce that are sitting at home with that experience? No, oh, absolutely. That they can answer calls all day, that they can drop their kids off at school yes, or that they're still working with kids, but you're not getting 20 calls. You know, we're getting 10 calls a day. We were. <laughs> um, and and can they still do this and be professional? And, and you know what? Everybody's working from home. Nobody's like, oh, no, you can't have any children in the back. And most of the kids are sitting in front of a computer. They're doing their classes. They're not getting bothered by them. And they're sitting home going, I can't go to work. And I wish I could do something. And I have the experience. Yeah. Or, or you, you don't even have to pay him hourly. You, you can you can pay him by, by, by the call. Say that by the call, by the commission, whatever. And And but. It's working it out that there's always a way always yes. to, to, to get what you need. The problem is with too many guys are technical. They're all hung up on, on what they know and how much everybody else needs to know and how a salesman is never going to sell it their way. And it's like, no, no, it, it's about creating a culture. And I think, you know, the way you're going, you're starting from scratch. You're, 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 you're getting it done. You've got the experience to go out there and, and make it happen. I have no... I I said, dude, you worry like, man, what am I going to do? I said, bro, you come from sales and marketing. You got this made. You're, you're, you're going to be, you're going to grow 80% faster than the average guy. I hope so. Thank you, man. I, I, you will, because most of the guys get stuck. This is where they get stuck. They, they can get enough customers. If the customer calls them, they don't know how to go out and talk to the customer. They don't know how to prospect. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they don't know how to do those hard things that it takes to be in sales they know how to do the technique and, and they live off of referral. So if they get a referral, they get the business. But at one point at, a, at that $150,000 a year revenue, they're all stuck. 80% yeah, it's, stuck it's, it's so common in the industry. I talk to, to great people and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with, with, with what they're doing, but it's so common to see people that have been in the industry for a couple of decades and they're still a you know, solo operation. They're still doing things by themselves. They haven't hired anybody and they're very comfortable. I'm not saying there's anything wrong, but, but it makes you wonder why if they've been around for 25 years, why don't they have. A Listen, big- every, every guy, when I, when I went and started up, I, I was talking to everybody. I, I want to grow my company all this. And all of these CPOs that were all of these CEO conferences all told me, dude, you don't want to grow. That's the mentality. You don't, that, everybody told me you don't want to grow. You know Why? Wow. You're gonna have employee nightmares. Then you're going to have the inspectors on your butt. Then, and, and they've all decided that, so I used to have, you know, four trucks and I went back down to myself. They all decided they were going to retract. And wow. why? Because that's fine. They, their house is paid for. They're 60 something. Their $150,000 a year pays them 75,000, which they live very comfortably for 75,000. They yeah. live in an average house, drive an average car. That's fine. But don't tell me that this is a business because the moment you get sick, the moment you have an accident, the moment something happens, you can no longer produce. You don't have a business. Correct. You, exactly. you, you are self-employed. Being self-employed and having a business are two different things. Having a business when I can say I'm leaving Call me if you really need me, but I've got a manager and I've got the marketing people and I've got an entire staff of people working for me that I can take off if I have to. And I still don't suffer financially. Yeah, their business are 100 percent dependent on them. Right. And that's why that. I, I, and, that then the, and then and then they're not bi- they're not business people. They're You're not. a business person. Yeah. You're out to do business. They're trying to kill bugs for. That's it. And, and I said, there's nothing wrong with it again. Nothing wrong with it. No. Because I did it. But then I got a wake up call one day when I landed 30 days in the hospital and I couldn't figure out how I was going to run my business. 
Wow. Yeah. And I said, not again, ever. I bet you changed your strategy after that. Very carefully. I mean, I was doing it because I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed what I was doing. I knew that I wanted to grow and that I wanted to do this. And I was, I was running, but I was running at all. I had four trucks on the road. I had a landscape and I had a pool service and I had the pest control. And then I had a crew of painters and, and people that were doing all kinds. They were all subcontractors. And then when I couldn't be there anymore, who's there to get the sales? Who's there to get the right. business? Because if I didn't make the daily sales, they didn't have any work. Yeah. And that's a whole different paradigm shift that you have to have. And, but the thing is, you already come with. That's why I said, don't worry. I know you're going to, it's our nature as entrepreneurs. Are, we're the most impatient people in the world. Yeah, we run out of patience quick. Yeah. And I did. And I, and I usually give people the benefit of that. This is one of the problems I had with this that I saw. The, the, we're never going to get this done. The, the relationship is beyond a point that there's zero trust. And I have to cut my, my, my attorney just basically, look, bro, just cut your losses. Cut your losses and move on. And a lot of times we're so emotionally invested that we don't want to, we want to, because we already invested this time and this money and I want to see them. And it's just better just to cut it off and, and lose it than to keep possibly losing down the road. Because yeah, I knew I could, I knew I could get that back in 30 days. And, and, and what I decided, you know, for 30% more Carlos than what I was paying a company, I'm bringing in a full-time guy that I completely trust of course. Ha have the most up respect for, because we've worked together for 20 years. He, this is his passion. He believes in what we're doing. He believes in my brand. Mm -hmm. I've got 80% better chance of making Absolutely. big it makes sense in the world. So yeah. that's one of the reasons. So the moment you can hire and the moment you can duplicate yourself and the moment you can get yourself out of the way, yes, like this it. is my job now. Absolutely. My job is this. Right my job is producing enough content to educate my client base, to educate and help people like you that want to start up, want to do this. This is what I'm naturally good at. You're great at it. You're great so, at so it. I, I, so I, and I enjoy it thoroughly. I enjoy more picking up the phone and having a conversation with you for an hour about how you're going to succeed because I know you want to succeed than to have to make sales pitches all day long. Yeah. And I love making yeah. sales I can pitches. Tell you, I can see your passion. And that's why. I love yeah. watching your content because I can see your passion. I'm the same way. So yeah, yeah definitely. You know, and we're we're just from different. We're 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 brothers from different mothers. You know, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. No. But, but yeah, I mean, I, okay. Venezuelan people are not that much different, man, than Cubans. They're very loud too. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I am like 18 miles from all of them. Um, you know, Hialeah used to be all Cuban and La Pequeña Habana and Little Havana. And then you've got Doralzuela. That's literally Venezuela what it's called. And, and, and West Onzuela. And West Onzuela out in Weston. And I'm starting to get into that area of Weston now moving into Broward. So this year we're moving into Broward. Awesome. You know, um, we had a vision of buying a really nice big truck, but it was a 90 to $100,000 investment. We slowed wow. down so much and now I got to recover and uh, I might have to build a smaller version of that to build. I want to build a really nice enclosed vehicle that allows us to do a lot of eco-friendly. We need a lot of dedicated tanks that we can't cross contaminate. Mm -hmm. And so we need it. And the average lawn truck has two tanks mm -hmm. for what we want to do. We need five. Wow. And, and we need, you know, pump electric pumps. We're not going to, we, but we need high end electric pumps. These things are six, uh, to a thousand dollars each because they're equivalent to the gas pumps. Uh, we're going wow. down to smaller reels uh, and, and we're trying to get this thing. I just met with a company trying to get it designed. Hopefully I was trying to buy it before the end of the year. And it's saying that's a hundred thousand dollar. The way they're designing, it's probably going to be about 90,000. Is it a box truck? It, 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 this is a actual truck that actually has roll up doors that we're looking at. The other one is a box truck because we have right on spreader sprayers. Yeah, kind of like the vending trucks. I have rolled, several roll up. Yep. Yeah. And then so it's all enclosed so that no chemical is out. Nothing's exposed. Nobody can steal. Nobody can steal my reels. You know, we're in Miami. Right. We're not in, you know, we're not in Alabama. Right. Uh, you know, well, we in Alabama, 
get shot over here you scream like crazy and nobody comes out you know <laughs> you know so if somebody's stealing your truck he's no he's gonna if he's in texas he's probably got an 80 percent chance of getting shot before he steals that truck then in miami where you can you know we don't have open gun laws here and things like that so it's it's we got to look at it and it costs so much more to do that so these are the things we're looking at bro and awesome, man. I, I, once i get it done um you know you saw my other truck the one i just built you know yeah, yeah. like why did you spend that kind of money i said because i want my people to be comfortable that extra two thousand dollars i spent more than worth it what is that in six years nothing so that's, nothing. that's one, one term my job so, so he can he can do this and pull everything out of his truck and he's happy he doesn't have to dig in and climb inside the truck everything that's in his place that's huge. Yeah. And so, so we're looking at, yeah, th that extra $20,000 is a huge investment from compared to the traditional, but the peace of mind, the way we, we want to compact it to be able to park it in a regular space. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're doing a lot of things that haven't been done. Um, but again, that was a very expensive experience from l buying a little van and actually doing lawn care out of backpacks and a little van with a 24 gallon tank that people say can't be done. And that's what we do. We only use 24 gallons a day when the average guy is using three, four, 600 gallons a day. Right, right. Uh, so are we eco-friendly? Yeah, we're saving 90% more water. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so bro, it's, 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 it's super exciting. Um, you know, what, what are you doing right now? Cause I know you were trying to, um, you were discussing BNI in those groups. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about your experience. Cause a lot of guys have been discussing that. And, and talk to me about the real experience and being in those groups and what people can expect. So uh, I'm lucky enough to have a girlfriend that who used to be uh, BNI uh, chapters VP. Okay. Uh, so she thought, I mean, I, I'm all for networking. However, BNI has got a bad rap. Sometimes people give it a bad name. Right. Uh, I've heard, I've heard wonderful things about BNI. So right. one thing she did, say is make sure you join the right chapter by right, right chapter uh she means it's got to have enough people and you got to have a good a good power team behind you what's a power team for us pest control people we want home inspectors we want realtors uh we probably want i don't know title people lenders flooring people so i scoured through the whole thing man i got went to bni arizona looked at chapter after chapter, said this is not going to work, it's not going to work, until I, I came across one that had mm. 27 people in it. It did not have a pest control company. I talked to a few of them. Actually, she subbed for me this morning because they make you. You cannot miss uh, any meetings. You have to attend. So Patricia, actually, while I'm doing this, she, she did it for me. Uh, so they're going to make it that you have to apply, already apply. And I hope they're going to accept me because I think it's a phenomenal group. I'm actually looking forward to it. No, that, that, see that I didn't ever understood it because here they're not that popular in Miami. Um, getting anybody to go to any meetings, uh, to meet anywhere. Um, it's almost impossible to get. I mean, that that's been, I'm looking at that new, you might want to look into it. Um, the new platform uh, called um, Clubhouse. It's an online platform. Yeah, I, I downloaded it, yeah. And, downloaded now, it's only available, I think, for iPhone, for Apple products. They don't have an Android version yet. Um, and I think creating those rooms for people from a marketing strategy saying, let's create a local room for local business guys to get together and do that, especially with COVID. A lot of people still don't yeah. want to go to any any places where they're going to be enclosed with a bunch of people. Um, I think that's an awesome opportunity, yeah, but yeah, I joined, that's one. I joined one already. Oh yeah. Okay. How has been, how's, how's the experience been? I just, I just actually, uh, a buddy of mine sent me the link. Okay. Owned it, but that's very recent. I haven't attended any, Got it. but he, he's loving it. He said, dude, it's a wealth of information. Yeah. He's really liking it. So yeah, I think I might do something like that for doing consulting group consulting. Mm -hmm. um where we get into all everybody into a room because it can be done from a phone which you can't do it from a lot of other apps so i think that's the the beauty of it so we'll see where that goes but yeah man anything else you're doing for for marketing that's interesting 
Man, I love what I call guerrilla marketing, Franklin. Uh, by guerrilla marketing, I mean, and I really mean it, I, and I can show you the yard signs I have printed on eBay. I love eBay. I save a fortune. I'm, I, I'm getting a 1,000 high-quality postcards uh, for 69 bucks, including shipping. Right. So to me, I, I've always been a huge advocate of guerrilla marketing. Uh, I put a, you know, uh, a yard sign when I'm getting off the freeway, that's fine. If the cops take it down after three days, 50,000 people already looked at it and it was all for free. Uh, so I'm, I, I hate knocking on doors, believe it or not, even though I'm in sales, that's why I ordered all these postcards that say a hundred dollars off your first treatment. Uh, we're treating one of your neighbors. Why don't you give us a call? I can, I, I can, I can show it to you. I can, I can, I can email it to you. Uh, so I love guerrilla marketing, networking. I'm being very cautious you know, uh, with social media because even though I'm a marketing person, when I own my concrete business, that was like pretty much non-existence. I mean, it right. was it was originating. It wasn't like it is today. It wasn't that mature. So I see, I don't see, I don't see it as an expense. I see it as an investment. Right. However, I'm, I'm going about it very, very cautiously. Uh, but I love guerrilla marketing and I can tell you a million things about it. We could do a whole podcast on it. And uh, right. that and networking, basically. Yeah, I, I think that you, you you can. Here's the problem with 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 things like guerrilla marketing, which was very 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 popular in in the 80s uh, and 90 before we had social media. I mean, I have the book, um, and I did a lot of that in a lot of businesses. Well, what you got to do is take the guerrilla marketing and taking into the digital space. And I was talking to. Um, from 417 and he, he says the way I started doing it which is it is guerrilla marketing concept is he says instead of asking the customer to give you a review when you're in their house and says hey can you go to my Facebook page right now mm -hmm. and can you take my Facebook page and share it on yours and give me a comment yeah, I do that too. And I offer him a discount to do that. I offer him yeah. $5 off the service. Yeah. If, and he did it right there. That's guerrilla marketing. Oh, absolutely. You're, you're just taking it in a different, where are people now that all their friends are online. So now he says, Hey, I just used this company. And, and if he's, if he has a big following, he's a big influencer, mm -hmm. then that gets shared. So I think there's taking, taking the, the original concepts you know, of how we did things in Gorilla and taking it to the digital. Oh, absolutely. And figuring That's out really ways. Cool. So, yes. so we're going to start doing that now, we, which, you know what? I never thought of it. I actually never thought of just standing there and say, some people can't give you a review because they got to log into an app. They got to register. They got to have a Gmail address. It's a pain in the butt to get a, re a, a review. Only, only the reason people leave bad reviews is because they're so angry that it, it, the cost of them going in yeah. and wasting their time to give a review is not to give a good review, but a negative review. It's like, remember when we were in sales back in, in, in the eighties, people would say, you know, it's very hard to get a referral from somebody, but man, will 80% of people that are unhappy tell everybody that they're unhappy. Oh yes. And oh, this yeah. is the new media that it's never, it hasn't changed how people feel. I think social media just allows for us to see more of that negativity at scale because you would have to physically talk to somebody in a conversation mm -hmm. when you were having coffee or having lunch, all oh, this company was terrible and you would only, so the, the damage <laughs> was, was very limited because of their scope of influence that they had. Now their scope of influence is wide reaching. Oh yes. And algorithms, if you ask me, our algorithms, geared in social media to promote the negative more than the positive and that it picks up on negative stuff. I will post super positive stuff on my group and I get zero likes. I'll post something negative and it goes like wildfire. It picks it up like crazy. I know. And so I, I'm, I've been testing that and people are like, why do you post stuff like this? This is because I'm testing the algorithm to seeing what keywords I can put in there 
because we everything we were talking about SEO. Let's let's have a good conversation about SEO because you don't do it. And I've been doing it for like six years. Everything today, everything is a search engine. Yeah, YouTube is a search engine. Yeah, everything. everything. Facebook yeah. is a search engine. Indeed, when you're posting jobs, it's a search engine. My yeah. website has a search engine. That little yeah. our, you know, magnifying glass, if you put in there, in that search engine, if you put, I put keywords in the blog and I put certain so they can be found. If somebody puts um, hmm. SEO, yeah. that all my SEO blogs come up. Yeah, um, Amazon is a search engine. Everything is yeah. a search engine. Anything, right. if, you're, if you're online searching for something, it has a search engine in it. Right, correct. So, so if you're an Indeed and you're putting out a job, this is why I tell people you need to put out five job postings, not one. Because you need to change that headline because they're going to be looking for what they're familiar with and you need to be able to attract that person, but they're in a different field than pest control. They're not looking for a pest control job. They're looking for an assistant job or they're looking for a manager. And those keywords are all in there. Right. So everything is a search engine. And, right. er, and so SEO is about search engine optimization. Right. So you need to optimize everything that you do in that platform to be found by those that you're targeting to be found by. Exactly. That's it. That's search engine optimization in a nutshell. So when you're on YouTube, I have to SEO my channel with certain keywords in the channel so that face, uh, YouTube knows that that channel is about this. It's also in my name and it's also in my description. So my description is keyword descriptive. My title is keyword descriptive. And the terms that I'm telling YouTube, this is what I'm trying to rank for these keywords. Correct. All of it is related. And then every content that I put out has to have that SEO format in the header, in the body, and then in the keywords that I'm trying to rank for. Absolutely. So now that is SEO in a nutshell. That's what it really means. So a lot of plugins were sold and a lot of software was sold to try to get your websites to rank in the past. It's really not even necessary anymore. They're really more of, of a of a tool to help you get all that information in the right place than it is a tool that's actually going to help you rank. The tool doesn't help you rank. If your SEO is bad, your copywriting is bad, your, your headline is bad, you're not targeting the right keywords, you don't have the right keyword density, meaning the right percentage of those keywords in the text, but less than 1%, but no more than that. So you got to kind of get it right. You have to use what is known as latent semantic indexing, LSI. Basically, you're taking synonyms of that word and Google can pick up when they're reading because Google now reads just almost like a human being. Right. It reads through that entire article. It understands what is in that article, what that article is about. That's why you have to have your H1 tag, H2 tag. You got to tell Google in this paragraph, this is what I'm talking about. Tell them what you're talking about. The keywords need to be in there. And then you're breaking down your, 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 your headers by paragraphs. Every header is a new paragraph title, and that title is related to the previous. So Google says, okay, this is related to this, and this is related right. to this. Because it remember, it's I.O. switches in computers. Turns things right. off. And, and that's why content is king. Content is king. People ask about backlinks and, and so forth. Yes, they're important. Content is you king. Can get them, you can get them organically now because if your content is good enough, all the backlinks we have are organic. We have way over, I don't know, I don't know how many backlinks in the thousands. We've all gotten them organically. Because it, how do I find people that want to link to pest control sites? It's not like nutrition or vitamins and very hard to do SEO for pest control unless you do it yourself. And, and what you want to do is if you're going to start with a company that's going to do SEO, you want to start with one company that's local. That was the first advice from my attorney was get a local company. Because if there's any problems, now you got to go out of state and go reclaim, sue them, go after them out of state. That's going to get extremely expensive. Yeah. So what you do is you find in your BNI group, you find a guy and you say, man, you're ranking on, you, on you're mm -hmm. in, in, in inspections. 
Who are you using? Oh, I use this local. Who are you company. using? Right. If it's working for them, it's going to probably work for yeah, me. Yeah. Don't ask the industry what the industry is using, but chances are there's there's a conflict of interest. And if they're in your city and they're doing already somebody in your city, right. it, it is, it's, it's not going to be good. So what you do is find the plumber, find the electrician, find that guy, hire them. And then from the start, and if they're, you know, they, where they come with a high referral that you actually talk to the owner and say, yeah, these guys are great. Because if you ask the company, every company is great. The problem is you got to do a lot of detective work. You got to buy SpyFu and you got to buy all this software and say, okay, give me the websites that you're ranking in my in a market similar to mine. Right. You're already in a market similar to yours with that competitor. He's competing. If yeah. chances are if you got 1,700 pest control companies, there's probably 1,700 air conditioning companies too. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and they're the home services industry too. So if they work see, for them, it should work for me too, right? Exactly. And now there's no conflict of interest because you're in two different spaces. Correct. So that's what I would do if I was going to hire an SEO company. Uh, in my case, we're we're so focused. We're not focused on on YouTube. I mean, we're not focused on on Google so much as we are focused on every other social media site: LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and so we're creating content to distribute across those seven, eight, nine, 10 platforms. But now we have to do it at scale. Content is king, but the amount of content that you have to put out to compete is a gorilla. It's a gorilla, yeah. And that's where I have to, why I, I rather bring somebody in-house who understands what I do, who understands where the vision is, and to be totally devoted to this totally. and nothing else. Yeah. And across my five brands that I'm building, because I, I Pest Geek is not the only one. We've got Pest Geek Podcast. We've got the Pest Geek Academy. We've got Nature Pest. I've got the Godly Business Podcast that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm launching the the um, the plant show locally. We're going to do a national local first, but then national the DIY Pest Control Podcast to educate mm -hmm. the home user. See, this is for yeah. you and I, but I'm doing one for the home user to educate them you, about this. You need a full-time person. <laughs> so we've got five podcasts that we're going to be doing. We've got three more to produce, you know, plus his. And, and we said we just need to, we've been discussing it for over a year now. Timing is everything. And, and now we can do it. So, but understand that if you're going to get into SEO, you are going to have to be very patient. because oh, yeah. because what what is the competitive analysis compared to every other competitor you got to go up on the ranks how long is that going to take do you think you're really going to rank with one blog a month no it's gonna it's gonna i'm going to, to to be super dedicated to it yeah and uh and and upload time i i would say if you're not writing three to five times a week it will still take you six months to a year oh yeah even if you're writing almost every day i was writing every day Wow. And like, and people were saying like, your grammar sucks. And I said, no kidding, but it's ranking. It's ranking. And, that's and that's you know, and you know what I'm banking on that you're reading it because you're a pest control guy and you're trying to find every error that I have because you're into that. My customer is not going in there reading everything. I have my customer is going to read 1500 yeah. pages. This is too complicated. Let me just call him. You're ranking. He's, he's probably not even with his great yeah. grammar. So. Yeah. And, and so, so yeah, his grammar important now more than ever. Yes, it is. This is why we're just going to go in and what we wanted to do. And here's the difference between you starting at zero and building. What I wanted is a, we, we have a building that has tenants that we need to start remodeling it a bit at a time, the entire building renovate it and bring it up to standard and what they wanted to do is trash it completely and rebuild. And then now that's double the work because now I got to lose all those tenants. I got to lose all that money, build it. And then this is the experience. When I talk to my other pest control guys that had SEO companies, I talked to their SEO people, but we, I couldn't hire them because it was a conflict of interest. Basically they said, all of them told me, all you really needed to do is a 301 redirect, build a new skin, and then rewrite all the content and fix it, which was the, the strategy that I wanted to go with. Mm -hmm. I wanted to run the ad. So this is the danger when you build something and then you want to remodel it, upgrade it, just like a house. You're going to go through a lot of inconvenience when you want to, oh, yeah. you buy, you bought a 50 year old house and you want to bring it up to the modern standard. And then your wife is like, I can't live here. 
because I'm going to lose my mind while this is going on. I need to go rent another place until you get this sorted out yourself and let me know. Yeah, which takes time too. Which takes time. So, so these are the pitfalls. So when I realize that after endless hours of conversation, they're not getting it and they didn't get it. And then all of a sudden, how, how long is it going to take now? Now you got to spend on hotel. We got to spend on ads. And I was willing to do all this. I'm, I'm, I understood what I was getting into and I was willing. It's, it's the fact that what I'm trying to get people to avoid is this. If you're starting from zero, that's easy. Because even if you're not ranking and you paid a company and they didn't do the job you wanted and you fired a my, my buddy, he says, bro, I fired 10 companies. Wow. In, in like four years because I couldn't get them. To, they were selling me. This is the problem. A lot of guys say they know SEO, but they don't. They don't. And uh -huh. you don't know until you actually take, okay, give me all of the websites you're ranking in this city. And then you go into SpyFu or you go to SEM Rush and you look at their rankings and see how much traffic they're actually generating. Exactly. And then now you got to become an SEO expert to be able to do an analysis on them. But most people are not going to have the time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You're not going to set the time to sit there every night and learn what it is you have to look for because you don't know. It's the same principle, um, Carlos, as trying to explain to your customer and to everybody what IPM is trying to explain SEO to the average pest control person or the average business person. And it's yeah. almost impossible. And this is why everybody takes advantage of this is why everybody says what it's we're spraying in your house is safe. Yes. Because even if they have the time, they're not willing to do what it takes. So you've got to be willing to do, you got to be willing to pay that price. I said, I tell people, look, and people, I'll put, they can't be that hard. I said, it's not that hard is that you have a learning curve. Yeah. And, and then after you have the learning curve, then you still have to produce the content. Yeah. Which takes I, a long time. So my, my job was when I started doing this was I had a route that was established. I had a business six hours a day. It produced all the money I needed uh -huh. on six hours a day. Then I would come home, be with my family. And then at nine o'clock at night, I'd be up to 12, one in the morning. Right. Yeah. Doing, doing the content, writing it, editing it, putting it online, making it rank. And then wait six, seven, eight months while I did this to see the cost. But I already had an income. A business. I had a business that was producing enough for me by myself to be a solo operator until year number two. And then I hired a technician year number three and I hired a technician. And then now here we are six years later with two technicians, me in the office doing this all day. Yeah. And, an answer, and a company answering all our calls and hoping that phone will be ringing soon. And it hasn't today Absolutely. because we're starting to recover now. But so now I got to do ads like crazy and bring in a guy full time. And this is the real experience. This is the, the part of growing that most people say, I'd rather just spray apartments and yeah. do 10 a day and, and make 500 bucks and not have any of these headaches. And so unfortunately, that, if you want to, you got to learn. Yeah, growth is painful. You, you, need to, you need to learn to manage the headaches. Yes. You need to, you, you need to step out of your comfort zone yeah. and understand what it takes to, to have a real business. So. Yeah. And that's what I'm focused on because I want to get this to five, six million. I want, to be, I want to be the regional company down here that does eco-friendly pest control that owns yeah. South Florida. You're and, on your way for sure. And that's, that's a dream, but it also comes with a price. Don't. And I, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to decide which of that price I want to pay. And, and, and yeah. the, the way I do it is by hiring people mm -hmm. so that I'm not a slave to my business to where I own the business. The business doesn't own me. Right. Doesn't and, and then I can still enjoy my kids and I can still enjoy my life and have a social life and have all this. And I bring in the right people into my organization that understand what I'm about. But that's also one out of a thousand. And the hiring process. I just had a guy that I've been coaching forever. Finally, he decided to move his call center to where he's at because his company is down here. He lives up north. And I said, bring the call center up to where you are so you can control it and manage the inflow and outflow of information. You can get better quality people. And it only took him three years to get that done. Um, and now he's saying, man, I can hire people so much easier um, that I'm here. And so he can have all his entire phone center, Salesforce customer service and everything. And the only thing he has down here is the manager and the technicians. Wow. You know, so again, thinking outside the box is, is hard because 
it's still hard. a lot of work. You got to get out of your comfort zone. He was like more comfortable letting all the managers do it. I said, no, you need to be a leader and a, and a CEO. Absolutely. You can't put that on everybody to do all that mm -hmm. hiring. You need to be able to build the culture for your company. You got to do what it takes. It's yeah. painful, but you have to be willing to do it. Yeah. And that's it. It's, it's going to be painful. And, and growth is painful. I mean, think about it when you were a kid. Very. But they yeah. call it growing pains for a reason. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and, 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 but you, after a while, it just becomes, yeah, okay, I got through that. You know, you got through puberty, <laughs> you know, you got to being the guy with the zits in your face and, you know, now you're a handsome guy, you know, I mean, uh, I'm, you know, too much reflection on me here. Uh, no, <laughs> but you, but you know what I mean, bro? This is, I, I think dude, that yeah. I'm, I'm so excited for you. Thank you, man. Uh, for, for the fact that you're, you're, you're getting it. Um, you're getting it done. You, you got your dream accomplished. It's not too late. I mean, what are you 40 something? 49. I'm actually turning 50 in a couple of months. Yeah. So 50, you know, here's the, here's the other thing that I wanted to discuss because I think it's important that people understand you. I'm 50, you're 49. I have dreams and goals of 25 year olds. I want to be surrounded with 25 and 30 year olds because they have a lot of energy, dreams, yeah. visions. Yeah. They, they make things happen. Right. But today, like a guy has been working for a company, he's 50, he says, I'm not going to start up at 50. I'm too old already. I, I, bro, I, don't see, I, I don't see it. I see so many guys talking, I'm not going to start up. I'm not going to risk everything and start up at 50. I might as well just stay where I'm at. And I'm like, dude, do you realize most business people that were ever successful started up after they were 50? Oh my God, yes. It, it's just in this new age that we're in. We were made to think that all the entrepreneurs have to be 18 and 20 year olds from Stanford. Yeah, um, false. You know, it, it, you can start up at 50. You can start up at 65. I had my friend who's a mentor who mentored me for a longest time. And he started up after starting up a plant in a partnership, having it go south completely. Walking away with a million bucks, coming to Miami. Decide to go back into the consulting business at 50 and wow. start up his new plant in Panama. Wow. Oil processing plant at age 60 something. He can be done. And he decided to, no, I'm going to, because that was his dream to build his own. He did the consulting for so many people. His dream wow. was to own his own processing plant. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about that like, charges $10,000 to fly down to Colombia and tell you what's wrong with your processing plan. That's it. it can absolutely be done. You got to have it in you. You got to be, yeah. be willing to step out of your comfort zone. And that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And uh, I'm super passionate. I can, you know, like, like you are. And uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm going to make it happen. You have no doubt. I, I have no doubt. Dude, that, we had that conversation Many before times. you started. I said, dude, can't buy what you have. Yeah it, can't, yeah, it can't be bottled. It can't be bought. It's either in you or it isn't. And that right there is you, you're, I mean, the fact that you can just go out, sell, um, is, is just going to be amazing. So I have no, no reservations that, that you're going to be successful. You're Thanks for believing in me for, and for being, for always being there. You've been an amazing mentor. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and I appreciate it more than you can imagine, Frank. No, brother, I, I'm here. I'm still here. Um, like I said, as soon as I have a chance to do some traveling, I want to see how I can get up there. Um, That'd be amazing. Uh, we're 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 we're, run, we're trying to launch the trying to launch launch <laughs> the um, the the Pesquique Academy. Still, I'm working on that. I just it, it's an enormous amount of work, and then I want to start doing it. Um, we're, we're actually doing it live and, and when it's a COVID thing, oh, that's awesome. awesome. so we can do it online and live. Um, and then I want to be able to teach people around the country what it is that we do that's um, awesome. to, to be able to get that in the next 10 years. Um, nice. You know, I'm thinking 50 and I'm thinking when I'm 60 that I, I don't, you know, I'm thinking I'm, you know, my goals in the next 10 years to be able to be in that position where this is a household name, what we do. And you're making it happen. And that's it. That's, that's the vision. That's the goal. That's what I've had when I started the podcast six years ago to teach and train people. I'm getting calls from all over technicians that nobody's training. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, you know, what's sad, what's sad is that the owners are going to get angry and jealous and pissed that I'm teaching their people and they're not, but it's in your court. You could have taught your people and you yeah. still can't and you're not. 
Exactly. You're not doing it. So, so, so what sometimes. you got nothing to complain about. If I am their mentor and I am their coach and I am their teacher, that says more about you than it says about me. Exactly. A lot. Because you, yeah. you own it in your right. company. So train yeah. your people, invest exactly. in them. I'm going back up now tomorrow. I'm, I'm driving up to Orlando to go to Apopka mm -hmm. to go back to, um, to um to pest management university oh you're going back yeah we're going back i'm doing wdo so i did an did introduction to termite i'm doing wdo okay. and then i'm going in march i'm going back at the 10th of march which is two weeks after that yeah going back to master's class for termite oh that's awesome so that's about that's about uh let me see eight 16 20 hours wow that's 20 hours one time. Then we're talking about 16 hours. No, about 12 hours. And then another, probably another 12 hours of training. So that's about close to 40 hours uh, of training in, in two months with them to, awesome. to really learn termite. And then I want to learn the theoretical, yeah, the yeah. way it's supposed to be done. And then I don't know anything about termites. Yeah. That, and I'm that's... launching a new division on termites and I'm the one that's going to be doing it. Yeah, because I, I I trust more I trust me more to screw up than I trust somebody else to screw up. <laughs> <laughs> so think about that. I'm starting a whole new. I don't know anything about termites until I yeah. had no idea what that was like. Until it's very I, exciting, man. I've been I've been yeah. dealing with it for a while. That's you know. So we need we need to talk some more on termite and have. Yeah, I'd love to give you ideas, and uh, you know I'm passionate yeah. about, about that subject. So yeah, so I know because I know you've been that for a while. Talking about it for sure. Yeah, yeah, brother. So yeah, man. So then, then I'm doing that, and then I'm going to uh, the Paul J. Bello um, seminar that he's doing. He's oh, starting man. to do these these mm -hmm. local travels, like the same way I want to do it for a couple of days. He's doing mm -hmm. it for a weekend, Saturday oh, and Sunday, wow. and then he's also giving the ACE exam, which I have the book here somewhere, uh, which I got. I'm going to become an. Uh, I've made you know I've had it in my heart to do it to become an ACE. Uh, right. an associate awesome. certified entomologist. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go for that, and 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 then uh, next year, if if I can't do it this year, is then also get my home inspector license That's to be a licensed awesome. home. So be a licensed termite inspector, WDO inspector, and house inspector. Um, so we're gonna go right. direct to market, so we don't have to worry about getting the business from the real estate people. Uh -huh. We don't have to get it from the other inspectors. We get it ourselves directly from the customer. The reason is there's a big rift in our market between home inspectors that don't want to disclose because they're beholden to the real estate guy because the real estate guy gives them all the business and he has to report stuff that he finds, nice. but then it costs the real estate guy the sale. Yeah. I, could I could never stomach that. As, as right, a right. You're not in that position. So, so yeah. that's why we're going to go direct to consumer and bring in the business directly and do this shows about real home inspection. That's why I'm going the DIY pest control podcast yeah, because I yeah. need to target them directly um, yeah. to show them why it is that they don't want that relationship mm -hmm. and why Great we, strategy. Great we, strategy. Yeah. yeah. And we have to go direct, but I'm willing to go on a microphone. I'm willing to get in front of a camera and I'm willing to do it three, four times a day yeah. and then produce scale at, at content at scale and distribute it to be able to get, that's my marketing strategy. So now I, I have to bypass everybody because I can't be dependent on somebody holding me hostage yeah, every time yeah. I want to do something. I can't have a contract for television holding me hostage. I, I was in television before, I, I understand yeah. it. Yeah. So this is the, there's no reason why you can't go direct to the consumer today and build right. your own brand and build your own channel and yeah. own it and own the content and not have to go through anybody. But again, there's a price. There's a price, yes, and it, and and it's called time mainly. So it's called time and in money because you either right. have sometimes the time and then you don't have the money. It's like yeah. and you have the money and you don't have the time. I I need to have both. It's I'm always always going to be a combination, but you're certainly on the right path. You're getting yeah. it done, and kudos to you for what you're doing. Thank you, bro. Not, not just for consuming, I mean for the industry in general. Yeah, I think it's it's amazing. So uh, you know, yeah. keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep at it and. Uh, and let, let's just stay in touch like we have. Yeah, let's do it. No, I, I plan to. And like I said, any time you need help, you give me a call. Appreciate um, it, man. And, uh, and when you guys are stuck on a protocol, you know, give me a call. 
awesome. um, we can For we can sure. help you out. And now and let me see when I can get up to Phoenix, bro. I'm gonna try to. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm actually may travel to Miami soon, so I was gonna let. I was gonna let you see, know. See, see if yeah. See if I had a consultation gig over there in Phoenix, it would be a tax deductible. <laughs> travel not a vacation you will you will get it very soon so uh, <laughs> you know that way it's you know you get the best of both worlds man you get to uh write off that uh business trip yeah. uh you know <laughs> you know <laughs> you're gonna get it very soon yeah brother so so that's what I'm, i'm planning on doing in in the in the very near future so yeah. god willing i get the energy this is why i'm trying to stay so healthy bro keep, yeah. keep up yeah. with your by the way you still doing your workout because i know you hired a uh Yeah, you gave up, didn't you? No, it's not that I gave up. I yeah. got I got tennis elbow now. So yeah. I can't do very much of it. I right. mean, I'm still, you know, running some and doing other yeah. stuff, but not working out as hard. Yeah. Yeah. And they, same here. I, I mean, we're getting old, dude. The, the the factory parts, they don't make them anymore, and we gotta take care of them, you know. It's like a 57 Chevy in Cuba. You know, <laughs> you know, that's that's it. So yeah, so yeah, I'm I'm yeah. doing the yoga, I'm doing very light, but I'm doing some weights. And I'm and I'm doing. Yeah, I can't know. I can't wait to get back into weights. I'm getting my third PRP shot into my elbow in two weeks. Wow! And they're saying I'm I'm progressing big time. So I yeah. can't wait to get back in the gym and lift. You know. Yeah. At least do some yoga. Do stretching. Relax your mind. You need to relax your mind. No, absolutely. Yeah. I I, I am trying to be I'm trying to be holistic in every area of my life: body, mind, spirit, Super business. Important. Yeah, bro. Uh, the older I get, the more I realize that I wish young, I wish I would have known that when I was younger, 25 years ago. I know. Yeah. I would have known that and I would have slowed down a bit. Um, and, mm -hmm. and, and, but you know, it is what it is. You're here and you, yeah. it's never too late to make a change. Never too late, man. Exactly. So yeah, brother, man, it's been real fun, bro. Thank you for being on Thank today. You, I know, I know, I know you got to get going. This. I feel privileged for, 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 <laughs> Doing it for real, I really do. And I, I, I am the blessed one here. I get to hear all of your success stories. And, so and make and, and make sure you edit out the part where I show, where I show my butt. Yeah, don't worry, I'll edit that out. <laughs> so you're safe, my friend. Thanks Thank for everybody. You, you're welcome, my friend. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks.